the bell icon to turn on notifications. We spend a long time entering data in Excel. However, the data needs to be sorted and filtered so we can analyze it. Let's have a look at this data set. We have a number of fields in this data set, such as the category, location, customer name, and item. Let's say I'd like to sort by category so that I can see all of my items assigned to each and every category. Now, how do I do that? Excel makes it really easy. If you do not want to sort any data, you must either select it separately ahead of time or ensure that there is at least one column of empty space between that other column that you do not want to sort. I have a tip for you over here. You can double check the boundaries of what you are sorting. When I sort by category, Excel recognizes that any adjacent columns will also be included in that sort. So it will automatically rearrange all of the other columns while keeping everything together in their respective rows. If you want to be certain, press Ctrl A, which will select all of the data. Alternatively, you can also press the Ctrl and the period key. Let me show you how this works. So if I have pressed the Ctrl and period key the first time, it takes me to the top left boundary. Control period again takes me to the top right boundary. And if I do it again, it'll go all the way down to make sure it's sorting exactly the data set I want it to. So these are the four boundaries. Now I'll click anywhere in this column that we want to sort by. And then on the Home ribbon tab, I'll click on the Sort and Filter button. I get a couple of options here. Sort A to Z, which means lowest to highest, and sort Z to A, which means highest to lowest. I'd like to arrange this in descending order. So I'll select sort Z to A, which is highest to lowest. Excel is intelligent enough to recognize this, and immediately it sorts the entire data set. So these are the items which are in the storage and organization category. Then for rubber bands, I have three other products so on and so forth. When you sort by more than one column, you are performing a secondary sort. Indeed, you could keep going on by adding more columns to sort. Let's say we would like to add a secondary sort by considering the cost by item or the cost price by item as well. This is an excellent example because you can sort not only alphabetically, but also numerically and even within the same sort command. So I'll just hit the sort and filter button again, and then I'll select custom sort. After hitting the sort and filter button, I get a pop-up. So Excel already recognized that I have sorted the data by category, and I sorted it in descending order. Remember, we said we want to sort by cost price. So I will hit the add level button, and then I will select the cost price field. And over here, I'm getting a couple of options here. I can order the numbers smallest to largest or largest to smallest. The options that I'm getting for the numerical values are different than the options I got for the alphabetical field where I had the A to Z and Z to A. So after selecting what I want to do, I hit the OK button. And just like that, the data is sorted by category in the first step. And then in this category, it has sorted the items by cost price from smallest to largest. We can do a quick check here. The last item in this category is 279.48, which is definitely bigger than the 10.9, being the smallest number in this subset. Then let's have a look at another category, the envelopes. So the cost price is 15.67, which is lower than 15.74. So that's the first item, and this is the second item in this category. So using the sort and filter functionality, you can very quickly sort data sets and start making sense of the data. So imagine you have this data set and you were asked to name the item with the highest cost price in the pens and supplies category. Using the sort and filter data, you can very quickly answer the question and determine that this is indeed the Boston Electric pencil sharpener, which has the highest cost price in the pens and art supplies category. Now let's also discuss the filter capability that Excel provides. So there are a couple of ways you can use the filter functionality. 
Firstly, you can hit this button and select the filter option, and then you will see these arrows. So, if you take a closer look, you have an arrow on the cost price, and then you have an arrow on the category price. This is because Excel is telling us that categories have been sorted in descending order, and the cost price has been sorted in ascending order. So, after hitting the filter button, you will see that the filters have been created in the data set. And if you want to filter for a specific subset of that data, we can click on the button that appears and then further filter the data. So let's say in this example, where the data has already been filtered by category and cost price, we are only interested in determining items with the markup above a specific threshold. So how can we further filter the data? So I just click on this button over here, go down to this option, number filters, and I see that there are a number of other functions that I can use. So let's say I want to see the items with a markup above 10. So I can go in the number filters and then I can hit the greater than function. And over here, I just type in 10 and I hit the OK button. And I see that these are the items with a markup above 10. I can further filter the data. Let's say I'm only interested for items in Milton. So I'll press this button and hit OK. And these are the two items with a markup above 10 in the Milton area. I recommend that you practice and familiarize yourself with the tools that we have discussed. Imagine if you have to determine the markup per item for a specific product category per customer. These questions can be easily answered if you have command over the sort and filter functions. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.